it's the day after Labor Day. I think a lot of people enjoy the content on the S650, both our dyno video for our GT and the Dark Horse. Um, wanted to get right into some content. It actually falls into, we, we, always, we want to test all the features on the Dark, dark Horse, especially the new ones like the handbrake. So we want to make sure that uh, that works, you know, we got, we got to make sure it's in working order. It works at, it comes at a perfect time that we're clearing our back lot to do re-sealing uh, on there. So we're going to go out there, test the line lock, the um, drift brake, and then uh, see if we can do some launch controls on it and see how that works. But um, make sure you stay tuned because we're going to test it all and it should be some good content, I would hope. So we're going to test out a couple new features on the car. The drift brake and then uh, launch or er, line lock. So we're redoing our entire parking lot, so I figured it'd be a perfect time to test it out in the dark horse. So if anybody gets offended by tires getting destroyed on a new car, you might want to just go to the next video. <laughs> All right, so we'll do, you want to see this? So right in here, you hit the initialize the line lock, you hit OK to initialize. Hold OK to initialize. Firmly apply and hold blade. definitely works. The drift brake might be kind of curious to figure out how this thing works, the electric e-brake, but we'll see what I can figure out. We got the, the 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 drift brake works really well. Like if you want to get it to slide, you just hit it. It's a tire. I'm curious how this tire, like literally the first burnout I do, it literally blows a tire apart. But is the tire flat, Matt? No. No. Might be just. Uh... The haters, that's just it comes off. Yeah, that'll come off. Dude, the, 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 that brake though, like you're just like, you want it to go a little more, you just pull that eat that uh, drift brake, and it just it's getting used. To, I was just getting used to it, and the tires just blew out. <laughs> if we get enough subscriptions and likes on this video, we'll throw slicks and burn, melt them off back here. Yep. Yours is bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think we should try? Cup 2Rs, Supercar 3Rs, Hoosier R7s. We're not trying the A7s, we've already tried. No. <laughs> it's too, it gets too hot. This is my personal car. I just put my plates on it. Um, did the delivery today. Um, just wanted to clear that up because some people get a little, a little wild in the comment sections. But 
We will drive, I will drive my car, I will drive it. All, I'm gonna test everything, the drift brake, the, the line lock, I'm gonna take it to the track and see what we can do on track and stuff like that. So yes, the car will have wear and tear from the stuff, but it's designed and engineered to do that as we'll prove. Um, but yeah, that's it's my car. So everything you see about this thing, it's me beating on my own car. <laughs> so, While we got it in the air, a um, couple things we didn't install yet on this car. So we'll kind of switch gears with this video. So there's there's these air deflectors that uh, we'll kind of go around to the front. These go on the underside, um, and they sit, they're side specific, and they sit right here on the subframe and help direct air, obviously underneath the car, but I think they also help direct air out, coming out the side, and help direct air out of the wheel wells. Obviously you don't want air building up in the wheel wells because it's, it's non-aerodynamic and it creates lift. So, um, <laughs> let me drop it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're, obviously we're gonna install these on this car. Um, the other thing we were looking at though is we might be able to get away with putting these on the 500s, the GT500s, the S550 cars. So we might find a way to retrofit these things on those cars too, just to, uh, you know, obviously if we can get away with more aero and um, it's, it's always gonna be better. I think this is probably something that came along, came about with the development of the, like the GTD, if I had to guess. Um, yeah, so kind of a cool little deal. So another thing we we're gonna look at too on this, the thing we noticed about the 650 when we had it in the air, not only these, but also that the underside of these cars have these panels that are covering the, uh, the floor pans. And again, S550, none of the S550s, even the GT500s has this. So it's like a, basically it kind of creates like a flat floor type of deal that a lot of the supercars have been doing for a while. Um, again, for aero, keep the air moving under the car. So the faster you can let the air move across the bottom of the car, the lower the pressure underneath the car and the more the car will actually get sucked to the ground versus too much air under the car is gonna create lift, which will reduce grip, obviously, in corners. So kind of a couple things that the 650s, the S650 chassis has that uh, the S550s don't that we're gonna try to retrofit on, especially these things. These are pretty cool. I think these are gonna be, uh, these will help again with aero. The 500s already have a lot of good aero, but having these in addition to what the uh, GT500s already have, I think uh, will give us a little bit of a benefit. So look for an upcoming video on us attempting to install these, these uh, air deflectors on a GT500. And, and along with these uh, flat floor panels too, we're gonna order a set of these things and see if we can get them installed on a S S550 GT500. So you kind of standing in the front of the car here, you can see how uh, how these, you know, obviously these these like diffuser flaps hang down, and it's going to help air as it comes under the car. It's going to help deflect it away from the wheel wells, and uh, and keep again keep air out to the side coming out of front. Um, there's a lot of air also that comes in through the grill and makes its way out of the. Uh, out of the front air dam here and this front this front piece this uh, air deflector on the bottom um, so again it's just just trying to get air out from underneath the car the less the less amount of air going under the car the uh, lower the pressure under the car and it's going to help pull the car to the ground so kind of a nice little addition and again i think we're going to try to get a set of those uh fit up on a gt500 and see if we can get them bolted on so what do you think you know what always runs is this the yamaha <laughs> The Yamaha Zuma. So check them out. I think it's, it's literally like GT3S. Yeah. Where it literally just pulls yeah, it's the air definitely out. stuff that you see on the underside of like a, one of the RS Porsches or a Ferrari or something or Lamborghini. I'm not gonna lie. I took the engineering numbers off it to parts to see if we could get some for our uh, 500. Yeah, I was just talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, I think it'd be a nice addition. I was like, I was just saying. I think it probably yeah. helps pull air, the air that's coming out from underneath, yeah. um, underneath here. From like that's coming through the radiators, yep. help get that, oh, air, that out. air out. The yeah. hot air Less out. Less air under the car, 
lower pressure under the car, and it's going to help pull the car to the ground. And if you get so, a lot of that engine heat out, that diff cooler is going to be cooler yeah, too, because yeah. that diff in the back. I think it's probably it's yeah. They probably have multiple. You know, they're doing multiple things. So, so yeah, got those installed now. Uh, get a set of new tires put on the rear of this thing, and we're obviously going. He's going to have a trucks when he's racing this thing, because we are going to track this car, obviously. So. We got a set of forge line wheels. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna put racing slicks like Hoosier R7s for uh, for the track. So he's gonna get a set of uh, more street oriented tires for this, so he can kind of daily drive it because he's been driving it. And it's a fun car to drive, that's for sure. And the GT500s are fun with the DCT, but sometimes it's fun to go back to a stick shift car and be able to rip rip gears and pull gears and have a clutch pedal and all that stuff. So that didn't uh, go 100% <laughs> as planned, but. I will say the e-brake thing, the, the drift brake was really cool. Like I was just getting used to it. I think with a little more practice, it would be even more fun, but you can tell that that was engineered really well by Vaughn and his team because it really was able, just when you want to kick out a little bit, you just give it that little bit extra. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed testing the, <laughs> the line lock. That worked real well. It's the same as the 500. The thing is with the, um, with the launch control, we didn't get it obviously a chance to do that because the tires uh, blew out but we'll get some new tires we'll test that out um, one thing I want to mention before uh, before we go I saw some stuff about those carbon traps uh, if you take those out it got another mile an hour or so so we're gonna dyno do a baseline dyno on the on the dark horse we're gonna take those traps off and then immediately dyno right afterwards and see what that will make you know, we'll see, um, hopefully on the dyno to see if it actually does make some difference. Cause you know, when you're on the street launching and stuff and driving and whether you're downhill, uphill, different road, I think the dynos are really controlled, which the dyno's good for, is it's a controlled environment to see the improvement. So we'll have that uh, up here shortly. So make sure you uh, kind of take a look at our content, do all that YouTube stuff and we'll uh, see you in the next one.